The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Well, good day. I'm Elena Rosk. A person is dead in an early morning house fire here in Bakersfield. It happened just before 2 a.m. in an abandoned home on California Avenue across from the BS BNSF terminal. An official with the Bakersfield Fire Department confirmed the vacant home had burned before, but this time when they arrived, it was fully engulfed. That official confirmed one person died in this fire, but no other information is yet available. And another major fire in Arvin this morning took two hours to knock down. Kern County fire crews were dispatched just after 3 a.m. to a fire in an abandoned commercial building near Stockton Avenue and Sycamore Road. Crews say the large building was full of heavy smoke with flames from the second story windows and from the roof. No injuries were reported and the cause of this fire is under investigation. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy met with Taiwan's president yesterday in Southern California with the Bakersfield congressman promising unwavering support for Taipei. McCarthy's meeting drew the attention of China, which views such meetings as a violation of the quote, one China principle, meaning the U.S. recognizes Beijing as the legitimate government of China while also maintaining unofficial relations with Taiwan. Here's what McCarthy had to say today. I think one of our greatest challenges with Taiwan and with China in the future is never speaking with one voice. When I became speaker, one of the first things I set out to do is create a bipartisan committee. We, we create a new select committee. You've watched here sitting on a Ronald Reagan Library, Republicans and Democrats together, the Speaker for the very first time of the House of Representatives sitting down with the President of Taiwan and having a discussion to foster peace for the future. And I think it really goes with the philosophy of Reagan. You've watched in a House be very divided, united on this issue. We want to make sure that the world continues to foster peace, freedom and democracy. So what can we do now as, as policymakers to make that world better? Speed up arms sales to Taiwan foster greater economy, be it technology, medicines, and others, and foster that bond for democracy and freedom. I think that will create um, one place is have a more united front with China, but for the world itself, learn the lessons from Ukraine so we're not back here in another country a few years from now. Well, now to our 17 follow-up file. Today marks 11 weeks since two Bakersfield police officers were involved in a crash in Lamont that killed a man and seriously injured a woman. That crash happening January 19th in the area of a pursuit involving another officer and a stolen pickup. Lawyers allege the officers had their lights and siren off when they failed to stop at a stop sign and T-boned that vehicle, killing 31-year-old Mario Lares and leaving Ana Hernandez with major injuries. In February, the California Highway Patrol issued a warrant for the medical records of Hernandez, plus BPD officers Ricardo Robles and Travion Cobbins, to possibly charge the driver of the police car with felony gross vehicular manslaughter. Then, about two weeks ago, we reported a claim was filed against the city of Bakersfield on behalf of the victim's families, seeking an unspecified amount of money in general and specific damages. For weeks now, the Highway Patrol has declined to answer our questions about this incident, including which officer was driving, whether the officers were wearing their safety belts, if the police car's emergency lights and siren were activated, and if anyone involved in the accident was given a drug or alcohol test. We will continue to follow this story and bring you any updates as we uncover them. And you can find more on this story on our website, KGAT.com. Well, 17 News is your local election headquarters. And the Tatchby City Council this week unanimously approved a resolution opposing an initiative set to appear on the November 2024 statewide ballot. Known as the Taxpayer Protection and Government Accountability Act, Opponents claim it will eliminate more than 100 ballot measures passed by California voters in the last election in 2022. Targeted would be Tatchby's Measure S and Kern County's Measure K, both sales tax increases meant to help fund public service and infrastructure services. All five members of the council expressed anger at the initiative, which they characterized as misleading and deceptive, in large part due to its title. If approved, the assistant city manager estimates the initiative could cost the city of Tatchby up to $6 million annually in lost revenues and additional costs. 
But now to some lighter news around town. The historic Bakersfield Fox Theater will be the site for the inaugural Central Valley Veterans Film Fest coming this summer. This film festival features four short films about veterans, with three of them focusing on Kern County veterans who narrate those films. The films are named Freedom Tears, Honor Through Sacrifice, For Family, For Country, and Kings of Freedom. Tickets are free and can be picked up at the box office. This film fest is happening on June 20th. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. Well, now to the coronavirus and its long-lasting effects on the health industry. The staff at Bakersfield Heart Hospital have ditched their masks after the California Department of Health and Human Services changed protocols. The CDHHS is expected to end the public health emergency and the strict COVID-19 protocols of the last three years on May 11th. The Bakersfield Heart Hospital said masks are no longer required on patients, visitors, and healthcare staff in patient care settings, effective as of Monday. The mask protocols may go back into effect if guidance by local or state officials make any changes. Patients may continue masking at their own discretion. Now, let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 case numbers here locally as Kern County Public Health updated their dashboard this morning to reflect 317 new positive cases and three new deaths. Public Health reports 71% of all cases are unvaccinated with 83% of hospitalizations and 85% of deaths among those who have not received the vaccine. And medical experts at a Texas hospital are reporting an alarming trend of infant deaths linked to unsafe sleep situations. Since January last year, 2022, Cook Children's Medical Center has had 30 infant deaths related to unsafe sleep, a total that doctors there say is more than the number of fatal gunshot wounds and drownings combined. Trauma records at Cook Children's show the majority of unsafe sleep deaths since last January involved co-sleeping with at least one parent or caregiver who woke up to find the child unresponsive. A variety of other circumstances were reported as well, including babies being placed on a pillow with a propped bottle, in the crib with a blanket or a pillow, in a recliner or on the couch next to a sleeping adult, or wearing a loose shirt that covered the face. Several elementary school kids in Massachusetts had to be rushed to a hospital yesterday after taking part in a dangerous viral TikTok challenge. It took place after they chewed on a hot bubblegum product. The kids immediately started crying and vomiting. One student shared the gum during recess, and it measures in 16 million Scoville heat units, which is very close to the equivalent of eating pepper spray. Officials are warning parents about this TikTok challenge and this dangerous gum, so if you see it in your home, get it out. Well, in business news, Forbes' list of richest billionaires is changing again. Elon Musk, no longer at the top. Bernard Arnault is bumping him from that spot. He's the chairman of French luxury goods giant LVMH, which includes Louis Vuitton and Tiffany and Company. His net worth has increased by more than $50 billion in the past year. He's now worth $211 billion. Musk lost $39 billion in that same time following his purchase of Twitter and shares of Tesla are also down 50%. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has dropped to third on this list now. He lost $57 billion in the last year, more than any other billionaire. Well, for us average folks, how much money do you need to make to be happy? A study by Go Banking Rates and Purdue University found that here in California, you need to make more than $145,000 a year to be happy. That covers several factors, including cost of living, but our state is not the costliest. It's actually Hawaii, where you need an average of $195,000 to be happy. Mississippi has the lowest, with a salary of about $89,000. Now, to put this all in perspective, California's minimum salary for otherwise exempt employees is a little bit more than $64,000 a year. Researchers did note that happiness is subjective, so those numbers might be a little different for each person. 
Well, if you're looking for some Easter candy this year, you might want to pass on the peeps. Advocacy group Consumer Reports says multiple colors of peeps could actually cause cancer. The group is flagging nine different peeps and other candies made by Just Born because they have an artificial coloring called red dye number three, which is a known carcinogen. The dye was banned in cosmetics in 1990, but it's still allowed in certain foods. Consumer Reports is calling on the FDA to ban it completely in food items. And apparently this is no April Fool's joke. Subway has released what many people are calling the strangest sandwich ever. Yeah, they teamed up with chocolate giant Cadbury for this new sandwich just in time for Easter. The six inch sandwich is made on the chain's Italian white bread and has several chocolate cream eggs melted in the middle of it. But the mashup food item will only be available in Cadbury's home, the UK, tomorrow, which is Good Friday. So here at home, some exciting news for Starbucks lovers. The popular pink drink is coming to grocery stores. The company announced the drinks will be available in convenient plastic bottles starting next week. Now, the pink drink is strawberry and acai flavors with coconut milk and fruit juice. The company is also introducing refrigerated mini frappuccino chilled coffee drinks and espresso Americanos. The price from about four bucks to 12 bucks a piece. And Chipotle celebrating National Burrito Day, the Mexican food chain giving away 20,000 burritos through Grubhub. But there's a catch. You have to order $20 worth of the food through Grubhub's app in order to then get a free burrito. But if you want to take part, the deal is good through Saturday. All right, let's talk travel headlines. It seems Americans want to really get away this summer. According to Google Flights, most of the top five travel destinations are overseas. London coming in number one, followed then by Cancun, Paris, Orlando, and Rome. Last year, only one overseas destination was in that top five. That was Cancun. And check this out, stargazers will soon have a chance to experience a once-in-a-lifetime solar eclipse while at sea. Princess Cruises has announced one of its ships will take a detour to catch what will be the last solar eclipse to cross North America for another 20 years. It's happening on April 8th of next year. So the Emerald Princess line will catch it during their 15-day Panama Canal tour. This is the second princess ship to offer the solar eclipse viewing experience. Tickets are now on sale. They start at 1700 bucks each. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.